Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a 3D endless runner in Unity and welcome to episode 17. In this tutorial we are going to implement the jumping mechanics. Don't forget, click the subscribe button and click on the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and everything else on game development on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So the idea of creating a jump mechanic is actually a lot easier than you would think. It comes in two stages. So the first is being able to press the button and animate. The second stage is to actually implement the physical jumping in the game. Now, over the course of this tutorial series, I've seen many people always asking me, how do you jump? How do you jump? Well, this is the tutorial for you. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to write some code in our player mechanics, which will allow us to basically play the jump animation. So firstly, let's go to our scripts, let's go to player, and let's go to the player move script. Now you remember we wrote this one quite a while ago, and it basically moves us left and right. So how do we do this? Well, there's a few extra variables we're going to have to add in here, and these are kind of checks just to see if we're doing a certain something during the animation. So firstly, let's add in a bool to check whether we are jumping or not. So public bool, and we'll call it is jumping. By default, it will be false because we won't be jumping by default. Uh, the second one is a mechanic to detect whether we are coming down from the jump or whether we are going up. So obviously a jump comes in two phases. It comes in the going up phase and then it comes in the going down phase. So we need to check if we are coming down or not. So we'll have another bool to say public bool coming down. Uh, again, by default, that will be false because we won't be doing anything. The third variable we're going to need is the character himself. So Timmy or Mousy or whoever you're using as your character, we need to reference them so we can play the correct animation. And we're just going to refer to that as player object. So public game object player object. Okay, so we've got our three variables in place. Next thing to do is to get the buttons working. So the way we're gonna have this is, remember we've got key code A or key code left arrow. So we're using, um, you know, WASD or the arrow keys to move. Uh, we could always press the W to make ourselves jump up or the up arrow key or the space bar. So we've got three different options we could use to implement this. So we're going to add basically the same kind of line of code here, but with an extra one there. I'm actually going to copy that right there. Rather than type it all out, we may as well just kind of cut corners a little bit. If you can cut corners responsibly in video game development, you should do. Because all we need to do here is change that from a D to a W. We need to change that from right arrow to up arrow. And then we just need the double bar symbol again. and copy that to say input dot get key key code dot space obviously because we could press the space bar to jump and open curly bracket and obviously the closed curly bracket will present itself there so we need to go down so now what we're saying is if we are jumping we need to do an extra check if we're currently jumping or not so if we press the key we want to make sure that we don't end up jumping infinitely upwards so we need to say if in brackets is jumping equals remember that's a double equals false then we do the following and if we aren't currently jumping then what do we do we need to tell the code that we are now jumping and to play that animation so we can say is jumping equals true and obviously that variable will become handy a little later on in this code uh, and then next thing we need to do is get the player object to animate that jump. So we can say player object dot get component and in spiky brackets animator open close bracket dot play and in brackets and quotes jump semicolon and save. So this bit is all very dependent on how you currently have your player set up. So if I go to my player, you should be able to see now here that we have the player object, we have his jumping and coming down all there in the variables. 
Uh, but we need to select the character itself that has the animations. In this case, it's this standard run thing. Animator, and just make sure you do have these on here. I do believe we set these up a while ago in this tutorial series. Um, so standard run is always going to be the default, uh, but we do have the jump animation there. So that's what we reference in the script. So on player, here in player object, it is this one where the animation is. See that one there? So now if I press play, he won't physically jump, but we should be able to have that animation. There we go. So that is the first step to making him jump. We have the animation in place. However, after he's finished, all other animation stops. So that's what's going to come in the next step where we can fix everything. So remember earlier when I said that we need to ensure we detect whether he is coming down or going up from the jump? That's because we need to implement a way of jumping up and down in this section. And obviously it depends on how fast you are jumping, but we do need to have some wait time there. So let's now add in the uh, bit of code which allows us to detect or rather implement whether we are coming down or not and what happens to the character. So if we follow this down here, we need to be still within our update method, but not within this if can move section. So you need to make sure that you do go a little further down. You should, if you're following this code exactly, you should have three closed curly brackets, one after the other there. And that's when you start this next line of code. So we need to say if the brackets is jumping equals true open curly brackets. So remember, if we have pressed it, we've pressed uh, the true on there. So we would follow this line of code here. So here we need to say, are we going up or are we coming down? So we need to say if uh, coming down equals false, then do the following. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to transform the position of our character. And we can do that really, really easily. We just need to use transform dot translate and in brackets, we just need to use uh, a vector three to say that we're going upwards normal time multiplied by however, you know, how fast you want to go upwards uh, relative to the space around us. So we simply say, vector three dot up multiplied by time dot delta time multiplied by how fast you want it to happen. By default, I'm just going to have three. You could make this a variable if you wanted, and we might do later on in the series, but obviously the lower this is, you know, the lower you would jump, the higher and so on. So you can play around with some of these settings, but for now, I'm going to have it as three. Uh, so perhaps after this tutorial, you could modify this even more. Uh, and then we need to do it relative to the world around us. So space dot world, close bracket, semicolon. So what would happen here is we would theoretically go infinitely up. So if I save that script now and head back to Unity, so I'm going to do this bit by bit so you can see what each of the code does here. So naturally, no problem running here, but now we should go up into the air. See what I mean? We infinitely go up because we haven't triggered the coming down effect, but we do also need to dictate that if we're coming down, then we need to do something else, but we need to do it perhaps the same kind of speed, faster. It, it's up to you. As long as you get your timing right within this script, it's not a problem at all. So I'm going to copy those sections there and change that to true. I mean, I guess you could use else if you wanted. It's entirely up to you, uh, but we're going to change this to negative three. So what this section here is saying that is if we are jumping and coming down is false, i.e. we're going up, then we transform ourselves upwards. If we set coming down on, i.e. true, then we come downwards. So this is the key section now. We need to create an area of this script that will say, hang on, we, we now need to come down. We've already jumped, we need to come down. So we do this 
in a coroutine. So this void update here, this method, follow it all the way down and go below that closed curly bracket. So you should only have one there which closes the entire class. And like I say, we're going to do a coroutine. This coroutine is going to control when we set ourselves to come downwards. So we're going to have I enumerator and let's call it jump sequence. Open close bracket, open curly bracket. Now this is where the timing comes in. So depending on how fast you want your jump animation to be or how slow, you would change the timings here. So the timings I'm going to use is relative to the jumping, but you could extend your jump. You could make it last shorter amount of time. It's tied up to you, but I really recommend playing around with some of these settings. So we're going to say yield return new wait for seconds and in brackets I'm going to have 0.45f close bracket semicolon so after basically 0.45 seconds we're going to say that coming down is now equals true so that would mean that if we trigger this coroutine as we jump then after 0.45 seconds this section up here no longer works and this section will work. So effectively, that means that we're then going to come down. So let's wait for another 0.45 seconds after we started coming down. Once we've landed on the floor, which is going to be exactly the same, so 0 0.45, 0 0.45, we're back grounded again. We can say that is jumping equals false, which means that we're no longer jumping. So we could theoretically run that code again. And we also need to say coming down is also equals false because we're not doing anything anymore. We're not coming up, we're not coming down. We're staying uh, on the ground itself. So we don't need to use that bool at the moment. And the final thing to do is then play the standard run animation again. And remember going back to here into the animator, standard run is what we use. Yours may be called something different. So just make sure you get the wording correct. But effectively, we just then need to play the animation and we can copy this line of code here place it here and instead of jump we have standard run and essentially that's almost all of the code the only thing we need to do is trigger this coroutine when we jump so going back a couple of lines up here to where we press uh, the space key if jumping is false we turn jumping on we play the jump animation at that point we then say start coroutine and in brackets, the name of that coroutine. So if you followed me exactly, yours should be called jump sequence. And there it is. Open close bracket, close bracket again, semicolon, and save. So before we play this, I want to kind of go over this because to me, this is very, very simple. To beginners, not quite as simple as it would seem. So we kind of need to understand what's happening here. So we're saying, if we press the jump button and we are currently not jumping, then we tell the script that we are, we play the animation, and then we start this coroutine. So this coroutine and this if statement will run at the same time because we've set is jumping on here. So we're saying that because we're jumping is on and coming down is false, we're moving ourselves upwards. After 0.45 seconds, coming down is on, which means that this line of code will run instead, which means we come down out the sky, and after another 0.45 seconds, we say stop to both of them, which means we're no longer jumping, we're not coming up, we're not coming down, and we carry on with the standard run. So if we go back into Unity, press play, we'll be able to jump over that first log. And jump. Excellent. So we can move, we can jump, perfect. Now I know it's not exactly the smoothest of animations, it's something we can work on later on down the line, but essentially what we've done now is create a really unique way of jumping and actually being able to do the course, no problem. Uh, like I said earlier, you could play around with some of these things. Um, for example, if we set this as 13 for whatever reason, again, it, it's always down to preference with a lot of what we develop around here. It's just something I've originally set it as. You could change it, it's entirely up to you. You can see that that jump 
really high. Just looks a bit strange. Uh, so yeah, that's how you can play around with it. But, and that's it. Simple as that. Like I said, I know a lot of people were always struggling to implement the jump on here. Uh, I didn't actually intend to implement it this early on the series because it wasn't quite as relevant as some of the other stuff, but you know, a lot of people really wanted it. So we've got jumping now, we've got it in place, we've we've got this done. Uh, next, Torah, what we're going to do is we are going to create the ability to remove some of these sections. So at the moment, our sections generate infinitely. And if you're really good at this game, you're going to have hundreds, maybe thousands of sections still loaded into this scene. We need to get rid of them. So we're going to create some code which allows us to get rid of those scenes. Uh, well, I'll say scenes, those sections, I should say. So until that next tutorial, guys, thank you very much for watching.